nursing home. The 27 residents were driven from their beds just after midnight as the East Lane Manor Nursing Home burst into flames. Two people were treated for smoke inhalation, but damage was contained to one room. The fire remains under investigation. A poll released today shows Iowans favor a return to the death penalty, but that support drops a bit when given the option of a life sentence without parole. Eighty-one percent of those polled favor the reinstatement of the death penalty, but that number dropped to 58 percent if the life sentence without parole is in effect. That, by the way, is Iowa's current policy for serious crimes. Of the top ten issues facing the legislature, Iowans ranked the death penalty number nine. On another topic, the poll found 69% of Iowans rate the teachers in public schools excellent or very good. 23% say their teachers are just fair or not very good. The Iowa poll was conducted by the Des Moines Register. Well, Iowa lawmakers will face off again tomorrow over funding public schools. Debate, d debate moves in the House as legislators split along party lines. After much heated debate, the Senate voted a $60 million increase to the state school districts, but the House Republicans say that's too much money. Democrats maintain anything less will hurt Iowa school children. The war against drugs in Colombia is getting bloodier with time. That tops our world headlines tonight. Two car bombings early this morning in Medellin killed at least 20 people and wounded 50 more. Colombian officials are pointing the finger at fugitive drug king Pablo Escobar as retaliation for the government's crackdown on the drug cartel there. This attack comes hours after four children were killed when a bomb exploded in Bogota. Rescue efforts are continuing in Kenya following the worst train accident in that country's history. Unusually heavy rains have hampered the rescue after sections of the train plunged into a river. Some 60 people have been recovered from the yesterday's accident site, but more than 100 people are feared dead. When Channel 5 News continues, a special new makeup that can bring back self-esteem. That's tonight's medical breakthrough. Please stay with us. Here's the latest five cast from Channel 5, a forecast you don't have to wait for. In health news tonight, changing your looks to be different is a choice for some people, but others are faced with the trauma of physical changes they never asked for. Facial disfigurements from accidents, skin disorders, or birth defects can also scar a person's self-esteem, but tonight's medical breakthrough shows how makeup is working miracles. Bob Brewer has chronic emphysema. For him, this oxygen line is a lifeline. A few months ago, Bob started slowing down and was tired all the time. So he checked his concentrator, a device designed to turn normal room air into the purest air possible. The motor was humming and it was pumping and it was doing everything I'd expect it to do. So it looked fine. But looks can be deceiving. In fact, the unit was delivering less than half the oxygen Bob needed. Which will make their, all their organs work harder to get the oxygen and they can, uh, it'll compromise their heart, their lungs, and their, uh, their brain, 
their kidneys, uh, pretty well everything overall function will be affected by it. Of the approximately half million concentrators in use in this country, one out of four is likely to fail at least once in a year's time. Now, with the development of this oxygen threshold monitor, patients can know the minute something's wrong. And if it's in the green area, they know that they're getting what they should. If it's in the red area, they know that they need to call someone to get help. In most cases, the only help they'll need is a new filter or a simple maintenance check, and patients can always go on a backup oxygen supply while the problem's being fixed. Recently, a national standards board reviewed the devices and demanded they be installed on all concentrators. Bob Brewer thinks it's a great idea. When I uh, come home from work, I like to watch that dial come up and get into the green zone. Then I know it's working fine, and then I can go on about my other business and content that that's working well. With today's medical breakthrough, I'm Pauletta Longo, Channel 5 News. Well, you've probably gathered that is not our medical breakthrough on makeup for facial disfigurements. That was on oxygen monitors. Interesting nonetheless, but hopefully tomorrow night we will bring you the medical breakthrough on the special makeup. On to other news. You may have hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands, being held by Iowa's treasure, and he cannot wait to give it back to you. State Treasurer Michael Fitzgerald has millions of dollars in this vault, and there's a good chance some of it may belong to you. Starting tomorrow on Channel 5, we're going to help you find out how you can claim what is rightfully yours. It's called the Great Iowa Treasure Hunt, and there's a lot of treasure. We have $36 million for 146,000 Iowans. Money's coming in here faster than we can return it. There's not only cash, there's precious jewels, family heirlooms, stocks, bonds, historic documents, valuable antiques, and the state wants you to claim it. Now, tomorrow at 5, we'll start revealing who it belongs to. And every day until the end of February, on our news at 6 a.m., 11, 30, 5, and 10, we'll run the names of people who have money coming to them. That's the great Iowa treasure hunt right here on Channel 5. And when Channel 5 News continues, Dave will join us with some good news for starting off the work week and the month. Weather is next. Well, if we can start off February like we ended January, I think a lot of people out there will be very happy. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, today we had a high of 43 degrees. That normally puts us for a normal temp in the middle of March, March 15th to be exact, and very nice today. Even warm enough to get out and play a little softball, believe it or not. Some people were brave enough to do that. Here's a good game going on today. Looks fantastic out there. Warm enough temperatures indeed for that. And plenty of softball going on. I think eventually we may see somebody slide into first. Awfully sloppy though with the wet snow out there. Right now it's uh, pretty nice out there. We expect to have a clear sky continuing all night long. Oh, there you go. Somebody got down and wet in the snow there. 27 degrees for a low tonight. Winds will gradually die off from the north at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, plenty more sunshine. So again, maybe if you're out playing some softball, a little wet, a little sloppy, but a nice day for it. 39 for the high with a mostly sunny sky. So very, very nice. And it was nice.
nice today, not only here in the state of Iowa, but all across the region, especially off to the south. Kirksville, Missouri had a high of 58 today, and 62 was their top end down in St. Louis. So very, very warm off to our south. Not bad around here either. 49 in the Quad Cities area, 53 in Burlington. A little bit cooler up where we were, but still a nice day all in all. 43 was the high in Des Moines, 42 up in Waterloo and uh, even a little bit cooler up in that in Mason City, 41 degrees, 39 over in Spencer, also 39 degrees in the Fort Dodge area today. So things were not very nice, uh, not very bad at all. Very nice temperatures all across the state. The reason why lots of high pressure just kind of sitting around, really not a lot of active weather at all across the U.S. A few showers and a snow shower or two off in the desert southwest, but not much going on. This cold front's going to start to buckle down back towards us tomorrow. It won't get here tomorrow, but it'll approach us and that's going to have enough uh, cool air coming in from the northeast, a cool soft just a few degrees and it'll move through the state, but the temperatures are still going to be very mild. Most of the activity still up in the north and off on the eastern seaboard. Up in the northeast, they've got some pretty strong winds now from this system developing. It's got some snow showers and rain showers with it, but not affecting us, obviously. Just going to move off to the northeast, off the coast, and we're going to be very, very nice for the next couple of days. Now, outside right now, it is clear sky, very pleasant out there this evening. 35 degrees in Des Moines, 34 degrees in Ames. The wind chill right now is at 24. Winds are from the northwest, only 9 miles per hour, so the wind chill's down there, but really not too bad right now. The dew point is at 30, relative humidity is 82%, and the pressure is 30.15 inches, and it is rising. Now, if you like today, you're going to like tomorrow. Unfortunately, though, you'll probably be off to work or school, but a mostly sunny sky, plenty of sunshine around here. That snow will continue to be melting. A few clouds up to the northeast, but really around the region, not much at all to speak of in terms of clouds. 30s and 40s, so a little bit cooler than we had today because of that wind blowing in from the northeast. 30s in the northeast east half 40s in the southwest half of the state for your highs tomorrow. Now for Des Moines, starting with tonight, it will be clear. We'll drop down to around 27 degrees for the low and for tomorrow. Not bad at all. Temperatures rising up near 40, but we won't quite make it. A high of 39 under a mostly sunny sky. And for tomorrow night, still clear, a little bit cooler, 24 degrees. And finally on Tuesday, morning sunshine, then gathering a few clouds together in the afternoon, becoming partly sunny, but warmer. We'll have a high around 42. And things look good for the rest of the week. Those are 30s, but those are upper 30s. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. A few more clouds than we originally thought, but still plenty of sunshine mixed in there and temperatures well above what they should be. So a nice way to start off the month. Yeah, it's going to be very nice. Bad. Coming in like a lamb, hopefully lamb? going out like a lamb. That would we'll be see. nice. Okay, thanks a lot, Dave. Well, being a big Denver Broncos fan, I know what it's like to lose several Super Bowls, and I can only sympathize with Buffalo Bills fans. Talk about going out like a lamb. Buffalo again today had a rough time of it, and we'll show you all the highlights. It'd take about a half hour actually to show all the highlights, but we got a lot of them coming up in sports.
Coming up on Sports Extra, an emotion-filled day in Iowa City for everyone in the Hawkeye Hoop family. But first, we kick it off with football fever reaching its top temperature. It's Super Sunday, bringing together super fans, super plays, and super memories in the Super Bowl. And today's super squads were the Dallas Cowboys and Buffalo Bills. And talk about big games. Put on your highlight hats. Here we go. The first break goes to Buffalo. Steve Tasker blocks the punt. Buffalo is in business at the 16-yard line. From there, Thurman Thomas will finally ram it in from three yards out. 7-0 Bills. Later in the first, the Cowboys get their turn. Troy Aikman to Jay Novacek, 23 yards, and we're all tied up at seven. Then the Bills started piling up. Jim Kelly loses it. Jimmy Jones gets it, two yards for the touchdown. 14 to seven, Cowboys still in the first. More bad news for the Bills. On fourth down, Jim Kelly is intercepted in the end zone by Thomas Everett, and on the next drive, he's knocked out of the game with a knee injury, a tough break there. Aikman would hit Michael Irvin with two more touchdown passes before the break. It's 28-10 Dallas at halftime. Then it was Michael Jackson turn for a few good moves. On to the third quarter we go where the Bills finally had a nice move. Frank Reich to Don Beebe, 40 yards. Buffalo cuts the lead to 31-17. But this one will seal the deal right here. It's Emmett Smith. He'll hammer it into the end zone. It's a big day in Big D. And once again, the Big D comes through with one more big play. Ken Norton Jr. grabs the fumble and gets the touchdown. At least Buffalo never gave up. Watch this. He'll knock the ball away before there's a touchdown. And, but in the end, though, Jimmy Johnson gets that Super Bowl hairstyle. It's all over, folks. Big win for Dallas. They beat Buffalo 52-17. to And I wish everybody in the world could feel the same feeling they have right now. Then they would understand the commitment. Because, uh, I mean, it, it, this has got to be the greatest feeling in, in, in of all, all things, just to be able to go out there and win it all. The offensive line really did an outstanding job. I, I got hit early a few times, and then after that, they, they picked it up and they did great. Nine turnovers in the game, and they converted five of them into touchdown scores. That made a difference. Now, I don't, I'm not saying it's all luck. They played well. They forced turnovers. We didn't play very well. And once again, it's a tough game for the AFC. They have not won since 1984. They don't win this time again, and I'm sure Buffalo, it's got to be tough for them. Wow, so many Super Bowls mm -hmm. seem so unmatched. I mean, it, two years ago with Buffalo and the Giants, it was a good one, but that was about it. That's right. Two weeks of highlights or hype, and then the highlights hype. come along, and uh, they don't live up to that hype. All right. You'll have Sports Extra, Big Iowa City Lots game, Lots of too. basketball, some comments, too. Okay, thanks a lot, Jeff. Well, when we come back, Elvis was sighted right here in Des Moines today. We'll tell you where when we come back. Channel 5 News will continue in just a moment. But first, here's another look at your five cast. Well, the king of rock and roll made an appearance at a Des Moines hotel today, but it wasn't the Heartbreak Hotel. 
Well, about a dozen Elvis impersonators got all shook up for a panel of judges. It's all part of an Elvis festival scheduled for May. And there will be Elvis sightings throughout the metro area, so beware. Lots of other fun activities also. Organizers say they want to get the community involved and provide Des Moines with good entertainment. Okay, well, I would, I would ask for your impression, but it's so fabulous, yeah, no it thanks. would probably outdo no the thanks. rest. So. <laughs> All I can tell you is it's going to be a nice night, and it looks like the rest of the week is going to be nice as well. For your forecast, clear skies, a low of 27. That's pretty mild for this time of year. Enjoy it. Eventually, things will turn bad, but not this week. Looks very, very good. Temperatures in the 30s after a high of 42 for the week on Tuesday. Those will be upper 30s, though, so very mild. Plenty of sunshine continuing, mixed with a few clouds at times, but really, all in all, a very nice week to start off your month of February. Shaping up great here heading into February. Thank you, Dave. Well, that is our report for this Super Sunday. We thank you for joining us. Jeff will be up next with Sports Extra and more highlights and reaction. Thank you for joining us. Good night. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. You know, I've got my high school reunion coming up. Only two weeks to track down everybody in the class who hated the cafeteria food. That could take years. So I got some help from U.S. West. With U.S. West additional lines for my computer and fax, I got in touch with everyone and made better use of my time. Hey, chicken leg. <laughs> hey, you did a great job, buddy. Well, they didn't name me most likely to succeed for nothing. Or was it best dressed? U.S. West, making the most of your time. Welcome to Channel 5 Sports Extra, coming at you tonight with Hawkeye highlights and some women's hoops from Hilton. Well, again, I'm Jeff Grummer, and we begin tonight with a Hawkeye homecoming that wasn't all happy. Today was the first game in Carver Hawkeye Arena since the death of Chris Street. But the Hawks are quickly showing that they plan to make this a season to remember. And Super Sunday quickly turned to silent Sunday in Iowa City as everyone observed a moment of silence for Chris Street. His family also attended the game. And again, the Hawks played a very inspired ball game. After falling behind nine nothing Iowa roared back Val Barnes with three of his 27 that cut the lead to four and when Kenyon Murray scores and completes the three-point play Iowa leads 23 to 22 and they are fired up but Michigan just kept coming back here's Chris Weber with a fab five jam but Iowa also kept the heat on here on the pressure Barnes gets two off the turnover this one is tied at 44 at the break in the second half the Hawks made a run AC Earl jams home two of his 19 points with some hang time Iowa leads 60 53 but with just over four minutes to go the Wolverines rally and Eric Riley gives Michigan a 75 73 lead but Iowa simply would not quit in this one AC Earl with the jumper Iowa by two then defense does the rest Kenyon Murray with the steal he's fouled and he'll make both free throws hey the hoop heads in Iowa City are happy today Iowa wins it over number five Michigan 88 to 80 and that's when the Hawkeye family again embraces the street family another emotional day in Iowa City and I call him Christopher so we'll all call him Christopher but anyway he might give a little inspiration to these players obviously he probably did but I'll tell you what, it's the players out there that done it, and they deserve all the credit, and that's, uh, I think, what you guys need to remember. This group amazes me uh, with how they've prepared and, and how they've gotten themselves uh, through this thing, ready to play, and then come out and play as well as what we've played these last two games. We knew uh, coming into this game that, uh, you know, they were favored and they're number five team in the country and everything, but we had something to prove today. We know we can win. We wanted to prove that we can win even though we lost Chris. You know, we just always want to just go out and play hard, you know, no matter what the odds were. I don't think you know, none of the games were dedicated, you know, directly to Chris, but, you know, when we play, we all have memory of him and we want to play hard because, you know, he'd always play hard. We knew the crowd would really be behind us with everything we've gone through the last couple of weeks and uh, they really supported us today and we came out and performed for them. 
And they certainly did perform. The Hawkeye Heroes win another thriller. They raised the record to 14-3 and 3-2 and and in the Big Ten. And, of course, that includes two great performances after the loss of Chris Street. So the Big Ten did put on a good battle today, and the ACC was also playing a little one-on-one -on -one with a couple of good teams. In fact, it was a Tallahassee tussle between Florida State and Georgia Tech. And here the Seminoles' Doug Edwards does the tomahawk chop. And Florida State is on a roll in this one. Now watch this. Bobby Sura goes to Charlie Ward, who goes to Sam Cassell. That's the way it's done. A very pretty play. Number 19, Florida State over Georgia Tech, 96 to 77. Just one other game in top 25 college basketball action today, and it was an upset. Syracuse surprises number nine, Seton Hall, 76 to 67. The Hilton highlights and names today came from women's basketball as Iowa State took on Nebraska, hoping for a cyclone version of Super Sunday. Now, Iowa State coach Teresa Becker spent a lot of years building the Nebraska program as an assistant coach, and today she was hoping to knock it down a notch or two. Tawanya Herbert gets the steal, and she'll get the layup up on the other end while also drawing the foul and believe it or not this one is tied at 22. Iowa State playing very well but in the end the Huskies are very tough. Here comes Karen Jennings and she'll put in the shot. Nebraska wins this one 82 to 52 and Coach Becker and the Cyclones will have again another shot later this year trying to beat Nebraska. A tough one for Iowa State but there were happy Hawkeyes all over the place today. The Iowa women's team chalked up another victory. This time Michigan State was the victim 75-55 the final from East Lansing. And coming up on Sports Extra we'll have some b-ball from Beantown as a couple of old rivals get very close again. Stay with us. The Boston Celtics and Los Angeles Lakers spent the 1980s building NBA championships. Now they're spending the early part of the 1990s rebuilding. And today the two projects got together in the garden, which of course is a place where championships grow. But lately it's been a little dry still. The Lakers and the Celtics say it's always a push and shove tough affair. And the Celtics started off this one hot. Former Iowa Hawkeye Kevin Gamble hits the three-point jackpot 14 to 10 Boston. But that's when L.A. got it in gear. A.C. Green completes the fast break. The Lakers led 54-49 at halftime. Now Pat Riley may be gone, but his haircut stays with Randy Fun and also his philosophy. They like to move it up and down and shoot, and Anthony Peeler drills the three, and the Lakers stop Boston today, 96-87. to And that's going to do it tonight for Sports Extra. Have a very good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Channel 5's Jeff Grummer joins us live from Hilton Coliseum. Jeff, imagine with eight mats and hundreds of wrestlers, you've had your hands full today. Oh, that's exactly right, Rod. Basketball may have March Madness, but we have March Madness here. As you can see, the eight mats are out, the hundreds of wrestlers are in, and we've also had tons of excitement. The welcome mats were out at Hilton Coliseum for the first round of the NCAA tourney, and it didn't take long for the Iowa Hawkeyes to start pinning and winning. 118-pounder Chad Zapital gets a pin in the prelims, then a second stick in the first round for quite a daily double. You know, I just want to go out and dominate every opponent. I don't want to have any close matches. I want to, you know, make a big gap between me and the rest of the country. On to Iowa's twin wins. Top-ranked 134-pounder Troy Steiner picks up a technical fall, while 150-pounder Terry Steiner does the same thing. As Iowa sends seven of nine into tonight's second round. You know, I don't think it was our best round, but uh, definitely wasn't a, a round that is going to take us out of the national tournament. We're still in there. And the Iowa State Cyclones are also in there, thanks in part to 118-pounder Eric Aiken getting a pin. 150-pounder Torrey Jackson moves along with a technical fall, while second-ranked 177-pounder Matt Johnson also advances with an 11-6 win. I've been planning for this, you know, since last year when I got uh, when I got knocked out in the second round. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready. 
And we're also ready now for the team scores. Penn State leads with 17 points after the first round. Iowa is second with 14 and a quarter. Iowa State in third right now with 14. Second round highlights coming up tonight, Rod. All right, thanks, Jeff. We'll look forward to more at 10 o'clock. March Madness on the mats and round two at the NCAA Wrestling Championships. Channel 5's Jeff Grummer joins us live from Hilton Coliseum now. And Jeff, what's the latest from the mats? Well, Rod, as you can tell, the big pin party is still going on here behind me, but we do have some very big matches to show you. Starting at 118 pounds with Chad Zapital of Iowa. He makes a nice move and moves on into tomorrow's action. Also for the Hawkeyes, no one was finer than Troy and Terry Steiner again. Troy wins at 134 with a technical fall. Then Terry duplicates that at 150 also with a technical fall. On to Iowa State highlights and Torrey Jackson, he rolls right here to a big victory technical fall in his matchup, but the match of the night came at 190 pounds. That's where Dan Troop went into sudden death with John Curtis of George Mason. Dan Troop wins it. Some great matches tonight and the great teams are starting to make a move. Great crowd, there's been some great wrestling. Uh, it's a dog fight between Penn State and Iowa and uh, it's gonna go down to the wire. I think the upsets are gonna decide the tournament. Quarterfinals and semis are the toughest rounds of the NCAAs. They're the most fun to watch. <coughs> I'm not watching. Well, I'll tell you what, we're watching the scoreboard right now, and Iowa has taken over the lead by less than a point. They're still wrestling out there. Penn State is in second. Iowa State is currently fourth. Now, you might have noticed that we don't have any Matt Johnson highlights at 177 for Iowa State. He did win tonight, and he gets a whole story because he's our Central Iowa Chevy Athlete of the Week. He's Iowa State's best wrestling Matt. 177-pound All-American Matt Johnson has put a lot of gold in the Cardinal and Gold. But still, the national championship has remained out of reach. But this week, Johnson plans to take it down. You know, I'm, I'm ready. To, I, I've been planning for this, you know, since last year when I got, uh, when I got knocked out in the second round. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready to, to get down the championship round and be on focus. Uh, Matt's going to have to be very, very intense. He can't uh, be concerned about getting the falls and getting the extra points. He's, he's going to have to go out there and just try to win the match. And Johnson has made a career out of winning at Hilton. And now, with his final shot at the title at hand, Matt's glad the tournament trail leads straight home. I, you know, it's a little more comfortable. You know, I kind of, a lot of friendly faces up there. You know, we're not in someone else's, you know, not in someone else's backyard, so it's good to be here in town. And if Matt keeps going to town like he did today in the first and second rounds, it looks like he might just be the next Hilton hero. Jeff Grummer, Channel 5 Sports. All right, thanks, Jeff. Quick winners at Boys State in the semis. One at Hilton Coliseum for the NCAA Wrestling Championships. The quarterfinals have come to a close. Channel 5's Jeff Grummer joins us live now. And, Jeff, it sounds like that close race we were hearing so much about has materialized. That's exactly right, Rod, and it's certainly been a wrestling marathon here at Hilton Coliseum the past couple of days, but now we're in the home stretch. We're down to the final four in each weight category, but as far as that team race is concerned, well, instead of building any big leads, we're just building suspense. <laughs> It was back and forth all day long, and Iowa 118-pounder Chan Zapital moves fourth despite ending up on his back. Maryland's David Land goes for the near fall points, but time runs out, and Zapital wins 12 to 11. Also for Iowa, it's two Steiners into the semis. 134-pounder Troy Steiner wins by injury default, and 150-pounder Terry Steiner picks up a pin. The Cyclones started and finished fast. 118-pounder Eric Aiken advanced with a decision, while heavyweight Todd Kinney won the all-Iowa battle, beating the Hawkeyes' John Ustendorp. 12 to 4. So the Hawks lost at heavyweight but gained in the team standings with six in the semis. Penn State is right behind with five advancing. Third place Iowa State also has five in the semis, but right now it's the Hawks and Nittany Lions with the best shot. Nobody can seem to get an edge on the other team very much. So, you know, right now we're going to have to make a break one way or the other, and if not, then it'll be right down to the wire. And we've certainly been here wire to wire. We'll have the semis. They start at 7 tonight. We'll have highlights coming up at 10 from some very big matches, Rod. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff. More highlights at 10. Let's quickly shift gears to Boise State. Channel 5's Jeff Grummer was Matt side again all night. And, Jeff, it sounds like we're basically down to a two-team race now. Well, that's exactly right, Rod, and those two teams have left the building, but we're still here because we have plenty of highlights. Now, the semifinals are just complete, and they were full of semi-surprises. <laughs> The night's final four started with the state's top two teams as Iowa's 118-pounder Chad Zapital moves into the finals with a 2-1 to -one win over Iowa State's Eric Aiken. But it wouldn't be long before Iowa experienced Hawk shock. At 134, top-ranked Troy Steiner was stunned by Penn State's Corey Collant, 8-4 the final. 
But it didn't take long for the Hawks to hit right back. Freshman Lincoln McElravey moves into the finals at 142, beating Lock Haven's top ranked Sean Gillespie. At 150, the second Steiner got back on top. Terry Steiner beats Iowa State's Tory Jackson 2 to nothing. At 177, another upset where Iowa State's Matt Johnson loses in overtime to Nebraska's Corey Olson. On to 190 and the third part of the Iowa-Iowa State triple feature where the Hawks' Joel Sherratt beats the Cyclones' Dan Troop 4-2, completing an up-and-down day for the Hawkeyes. Overall, I had more positive things than negative, so that's, you know, you got to feel halfway up more than down. But it was certainly a down night for Iowa State. Heavyweight Todd Kinney wrestles well but loses to North Carolina State's top-ranked Sylvester Turquay as Iowa State fails to qualify a wrestler for the finals. Now the busiest guy all night long has been the guy changing the numbers on that board. As you can see, four sessions now complete. Iowa leads with 95 and a quarter points. Penn State now has 76 and a half. Basically, it's a two-team race right now. Iowa will have four in the finals. It's going to be very exciting coming up tomorrow. And, of course, we'll be right here with all the highlights. All right, thanks, Jeff. Doing a great job over at Hilton Coliseum. Sounds like it's a sure. two-team race. NCAA. Well, he would add to both tonight. The great pass from Churchwell. Boy is up by five at halftime. Harrington, the block on Brian Fair, leading to a fast break. Churchwell the other way. He had 25. Calhoun didn't even want to watch this one, but there was more. Harrington showing off the full arsenal. The spin, the left hand, and gets it to drop. He had 22. Inside, outside, nothing but the bottom of the net. He gives his nod of approval. His teammates doing the Othello wave. Othello. Quite a fella. And a good win at that. 86-69, the final. The Huskies, three of four losses coming in the Big East. Joey Brown, 17 points, nine rebounds, nine assists, four steals. John Thompson's letting this team go. They seem to be a little bit more active on the offensive end. Maybe they're just a better scoring team than last year. We will bring you the highlights of KU's win over K-State a little bit later on in this show. Got a little bit of a scare, but I'm sure Roy Williams will just take the W, the new number one team in the country, Kansas. Sixth straight win since the uh, buzzer beating loss to Michigan in the Rainbow Classic. KU coach Roy Williams says the only good thing about being number one this time of the year is it means you're winning your games. The Jayhawks jumping three spots this week after winning three in a row. Virginia is still undefeated and not getting any respect. They're not even ranked ahead of the team they just beat, Duke, but they did get three first place votes. Keith. Back in the NFL, Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson could set a Super Bowl record. Today he got phone congratulations for having won the NFC title from one president. Two weeks from today he could get phone congratulations for having won the Super Bowl from another president. Cowboys went home to DFW today. Johnson says President Bush called him today and did not ask for Super Bowl tickets. The folks go back to work Wednesday, fly to Pasadena on Sunday. The Bills, meanwhile, return to Buffalo International Airport. Jim Kelly doing the Ralph Cramden impression. They've already started the we're not going to lose three in a row talk. Both teams reported healthy just 306 and a half hours before kickoff. Jimmy Johnson said beating the Niners still wasn't as exciting as winning the national title at Miami. I think winning a Super Bowl would probably parallel. Yeah, I think he'll change his mind then. Uh, still to come on the small show, more on the boys and the Bills. And we'll go back to the NBA for the Warriors and the Kings. The Dream Teamer did all he could do to help his teammates stave off a surprise at the hands of the red-hot team from California's capital city. And the Shaq Tour continued with the main man playing to rave reviews again in Philly. Stay with us. There we were, a jillion miles outside of the hood. The bus got a flat, got no jack. Homie's got to cut his grass. What's up? Four and a half. 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 Four and a This is the Mercury Grand Marquis. It also offers standard dual airbags and available anti-lock brakes. This is probably the strongest argument to date for the two-car garage. All this and the quality of the Mercury. People that 
first come to Subway are a little surprised we don't have sandwiches ready, just fresh bread. That's so you can see your sandwich being made and tell me if you like onions, tomatoes, or even hot peppers. I'm not a mind reader, and there's lots to choose from. If your sandwich looks as good as it tastes, that's because Subway has a training center where experts like Mr. Pilchin teaches the art of making beautiful sandwiches. He calls himself an art teacher. I guess that makes me a sandwich artist. Ask a sandwich artist to make you a six-inch meatball sub. Now just $1.69 at Subway. To me, there's nothing better than winning a Super Bowl or a NASCAR race. But to finish strong, you have to start fresh. That's why my car starts with an interstate battery. Interstate batteries are fresh, thanks to the largest dealer network and a lightning fast restocking system. So insist on an interstate battery. For factory fresh power, look for this symbol or call 1-800-CRANKIT. And start fresh with interstate. Sports Center is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that fresh, pure, and natural taste. Nothing beats a Bud. We're back, and so are the Warriors and Kings, who after months of role reversal had seemingly both gone down the tubes when they met at Oakland early in the evening. The once-hot Kings had lost four of five. The drowning Warriors had dropped five straight. Bad way to start the game if you're Wayman Tisdale. He goes off Chris Mullins' foot, comes down, sprains both the right ankle and hurts groin, and Chris got a circle around his foot at the same time. Uh, Wayman did not come back. Spud Webb tried to come back. Great pass to the former Warrior Rod Higgins. Spud again driving the lane and belted away by Mullen. And look at this save. To Hardaway, to Latrell Sprewell. They map that out in practice. 55 all at the half. No, they don't. Second half, Warriors break is effective early on. Hardaway to Sharunas. Great bounce pass over to Strewell for the slam. Kings strong comeback. Walt Williams, the wizard, to Dwayne Coswell. Kings by four. Webb does not get rejected when he busts the lane this time. Off the glass in the Kings by four. And then look at this. Kings by three, and, and the man next to the basket is Hardaway at six foot. Loses all the height and that meaningless jump there. That was a little trouble, but Tisdale and Gary St. Jean live and leave happily ever after. The Kings win this one by four, as Williams has 24 in the winning cause, and the Warriors have now dropped five in a row. Clippers and T-Wolves in Minnesota. Minnesota up early. Michael Williams, the alley oop to Mr. Leitner for the dunk. And then Christian. Is this pretty or what? Splits two defenders for the lay-in. Wolves up by eight at the half. Third quarter, 73-66 Minnesota. Stanley Roberts dominates Luke Longley. You didn't think it'd be a mismatch, did you? There it is again. Clips down by three. Clips down by one in the fourth. Danny with the miss. Look at Roberts. Kabong! Game tied at 79. 42 seconds left. It's the Wolves by one. Mark Jackson from outside for two. Clippers by one. And here we go. Drawing in green again. The official color of the NBA. The last play. Three and a half seconds left. Clips by one. The person inbound pass tipped by Danny Manning and retrieved by Mark Jackson. And Sidney Lowe says, I shouldn't have taken the job. I should have stayed on as an assistant. I should have.